This is Akashwani. In the program Money Talk, now we bring you a discussion on key takeaways of the Prime Minister's roundtable meeting with technology industry leaders in USA. The participants are Santosh Tiwari, economic analyst, and Bala Nagendran D, Akashwani correspondent. The Honorable Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi, has interacted with the Chief Executive Officers in a roundtable tech conference organized by the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. This has been a significant conference. To talk more on the key takeaways of the discussion, I am joined by economic analyst filled with experience, Mr. Santosh Tiwari. Welcome. Thank you very much. Could you highlight the takeaways of the conference? You see that from the earlier days of the high-level visits, especially of the Prime Minister or the top dignitaries, the focus was mostly on geopolitics. And this is an interesting development across the world and especially with in relation to India. So Indian Prime Minister going to US and talking to 15 top CEOs who are like into technology, emerging technology, and dive deep into different areas of technology which are going to be deciding the fate of the world and how the economic growth will take place. It is a significant move. And this is not the first time that Prime Minister Narendra Modi is doing this. He has been doing this over a period of time in his two previous tenures as Prime Minister. And in this tenure, he is taking the whole thing to the next level. So if you look at the subjects and the areas which he has discussed with these top CEOs, whether it is quantum computing, whether it is AI, whether it is semiconductor, whether it is biotechnology, or other areas of information technology developments, these are all areas of which will lead to the growth that will take place in the world, across the world, and especially in a country like India, which is emerging very fast as global hub of technology, especially in areas like semiconductor or AI. So I would say that the prime takeaway from this meeting would be that this meeting has renewed the interest of those companies who are already in India or want to come to India and who are in emerging technologies to expand their scope of work in India. The Prime Minister has hinted that it is high time for the industries to invest in India and capture global growth. While the discussion revolved around IT, quantum, AI, computing, communication and semiconductor, especially India has organized Semicon 2024, which was recent, and wherein India-US collaboration has been significant. Could you take us through the future prospects in the area of semiconductor in particular? India is going big on semiconductors. And this is one area where India has been trying to find a breakthrough for several times. The steps have come in the right direction, but things were not happening. But in last two, three years, or especially in last tenure of this government, it has appeared that, you know, things are moving in the right direction. So whether it is in Gujarat, whether it is in Tamil Nadu, whether it is in other states, the governments have started providing the roadmap or the growth pathway to the companies to come and invest in India and be big in the semiconductor sector. The ambition of India, which is an ambition which can be fulfilled by the help of the government, the foreign investors or the foreign companies which are in these sectors, and also the Indian companies who will basically capitalize on the opportunity which would be coming through these foreign companies who are already in the semiconductor sector. And the ambition is to make India the global hub of semiconductors. India becoming a global hub of semiconductors would make India a country which will lead the next level of technological growth at the global level. And that is what is the ambition, as I said earlier. Different states and the central government are now together facilitating the ease of doing business or the steps which are required for setting up large semiconductor infrastructure or production facilities. And things have started moving forward in the right direction, as I said. Talking about the sectoral aspects, could you take us through what are the sectors that are going to see the benefits of these sort of interactions? One of the most important sectors which is in these kind of talks, you know, at the center stage is artificial intelligence. And the implementation level of artificial intelligence is witnessing an exponential rise across the world. And India is not untouched. Different countries are following different approaches in terms of supporting artificial intelligences. And as you ask, which are the sectors? Artificial intelligence is one technology which will benefit across sectors, every sector. And that's why I started with artificial intelligence. I'm bringing in one point here which could be of interest to all the listeners. 
is that artificial intelligence brings to the table some issues, some questions, which every country is trying to handle at different levels. And that is where is the connect of which are the sectors which will get benefit help from artificial intelligence. Now, India wants to have a responsible and ethical use of artificial intelligence. Now, responsible and ethical use means that it will allow entry of artificial intelligence or spread of artificial intelligence in the areas in a cautious manner. So, whether it is gaming, whether it is a visual presentation, whether it is film, television, social media, etc. Everywhere artificial intelligence could be used. But India has clearly indicated and Prime Minister said this in that meeting also that India is for responsible and ethical use. There are some countries in the world which have allowed unbridled use of artificial intelligence. So, again bringing back your question of which are the sectors which would get benefited, artificial intelligence would benefit sectors like healthcare. Sectors like travel and tourism, sectors like gaming animation, sectors like film, television, etc. But again, India wants a responsible and ethical use. So, you have to keep this in mind. Quantum computing is still in a nascent stage across the world. So, we will have to see in next 10 years how this quantum computing thing comes into picture. But whenever the quantum computing becomes practically usable, it will revolutionize your information technology sector. The speed at which these computers work and speed at which we take work with the help of these computers, that will get manifold increase. Now, quantum computing means that you will be able to perform every single function that a computer performs at a speed which is unrecognized. Nobody can recognize you. It's very speedy. But that the time has to come for quantum computing. When it comes to semiconductors, if India comes into semiconductor, obviously, whether it is mobile, whether it is computers, whether it is electronics, whether it is any area which is related to a semiconductor or chips, those sectors would benefit. Not only domestic industry, but it will get exported also. And across the board, India will benefit in terms of overall larger economy also. So, in terms of sectors, the critical and emerging technologies which were there in discussion at this round table would benefit across the board all sectors, but specifically healthcare, tourism, service sector, financial technologies, and also overall growth of the economy will get impacted by the use of these technologies. The discussion also revolved around the green fee developments. As per the World Investment Report 2023, India has emerged as the FDI powerhouse when it comes to green field developments. The overall FDI stood at 71 billion and the FDI in equities stood around 44 billion. So, despite geopolitical tension, despite regional tensions, despite the global external influences, India is showing a bright picture. What are the factors that you think that have contributed for this bright picture? That's the beauty of India, why India is still one of the fastest growing economy. Now, there are different states at different level of growth. You know, there are states like Tamil Nadu, there are states like Gujarat, there are states like Maharashtra, there are states like Karnataka, there are states like even Rajasthan is emerging, states like Odisha. There are states where technology or the growth aspects of technology and capitalization of the foreign business potential is growing by leaps and bounds. Now, when these states come together with what central government is doing in promoting entry of foreign business, promoting ease of doing business across the country, bringing in better infrastructure in the country, when all these things come together on the table, obviously, the growth sees a different kind of a momentum altogether. And the world is now witnessing that India is the place for getting into in these areas especially the technological development areas. Manufacturing earlier was one area which has seen growth in foreign investment. But if you look at the kind of investment which is coming into India right now, and that is why FDI rise, etc. These are coming in high technology, emerging technology areas. And that's why you see that kind of interest in terms of foreign investment. What do you see in the future? Do you think that the contribution of the FDI to the service sector will be superseded by the manufacturing sector? That's the direction in which it seems that India is going. If you see your prime minister visiting US and talking to 15 top technology company CEOs, if they are coming and talking about India's technological growth and what kind of potential India has for that kind of a growth which is attracting these companies, then obviously India has emerged as a place, as a country where foreign investors are looking to enhance their manufacturing capabilities. And these manufacturing capabilities would be in emerging technology areas and in other areas also. 
Now, auto is also taking a different shape where emerging technology or technology is being used. Green technologies are used. EVs are coming in. So, again, I would say that India is emerging as one place which blends your technological development, which blends investment capitalization, which blends a good consumer base to everything that a foreign investor or a foreign company would want. And that's where India's capability, potential, whatever you call it, lies. Central government is trying to basically further this interest in such a manner that the whole investment appetite gets expedited. And this kind of a foreign investment which can bring India into a global stage as a global powerhouse of superconductors, global powerhouse which is furthering AI, global powerhouse which is helping quantum computing taking a shape, global powerhouse which is helping information technology going into a next stage. We are already there, you know, in terms of financial technology. India is leading world in financial technologies. So all these are slated to combine together to take India to where India wants to be in 2047. I would like to paraphrase what our Honorable Prime Minister has said in the Roundtable Tech Conference, that it is high time for the industry leaders to participate in India's growth in their fields of co-development, co-design and co-production. Please dissect and explain this. It's a beautiful phrase and the summing up which Prime Minister has given. Co-design. Co-design means come, let us join hands and design together. Technology has an important element of design. So the Prime Minister is saying, come here, invest in India, let's co-design and co-develop. Once you design a product, you develop. And once you develop that kind of product, which can be produced at a mass scale or which can be produced to make business profits of a different kind, then obviously you have to join hands together. So the catch word here of Prime Minister is, let's join hands. Co-design, co-develop, coordinate and co-produce. And make India a country which is there, which has emerged or which is emerging as a global powerhouse of technological development and global growth. Prime Minister is not talking about only India's growth. He's just hinting that what India wants is come here, co-design, co-produce, co-develop, coordinate and participate in global growth through India's growth. When we aspire to be the third largest economy, so giving impetus to manufacturing tech sector becomes inevitable. Even if we look at the FDI, there is a 16% contribution by the FDI to service. On the other hand, nearly a 15% contribution to manufacturing sector. There is no gigantic difference. How do you see this transformation? Because this is not the case if you see 10, 15 years ago. The manufacturing sector has been way, way behind. Now we are getting forward. And what would it be 20 years down the line? See, the idea is to take manufacturing to the level where it is contributing at least 25%. At least 25%. Because services, by its very nature, has seen tremendous growth in the last 15-20 years. Because at that time when economic development was taking place, it was the services which had to grow in a big manner. Now that has happened. Now services sector also has to be catapulted through technological developments. That is happening now. When you are talking about emerging technology and also these technologies which are going to help industry, they will come, the products will come through manufacturing only. And that will ignite the growth of manufacturing sector. So I don't see a reason why the manufacturing sector would again come to 25%, can't give a 25% contribution to India's industry. Powered by these technological developments, powered by co-design, co-production of these kind of products, you know, which are in emerging technology, which have huge demand, not only in India, but across the world. Any product developed in AI, any product developed in, in your semiconductor, that will have a demand not only in India, but outside also. So that's where when you say that how will India emerge as a global powerhouse of semiconductor, global powerhouse of technological development, then the question comes that if India has a large consumer base, if India has demographic dividend, which can bring in people, skilled workforce, which can help manufacturing grow, then why not India's manufacturing, you know, percentage or manufacturing share of industrial growth or industry should grow to 25% or maybe beyond that? That question I see getting answered in next decade or so. With that positive note, thank you very much. Thank you. You were listening to a discussion on key takeaways of the Prime Minister's Roundtable meeting with technology industry leaders in USA. The participants were Santosh Tiwari, Economic Analyst, and Bala Nagendran D., Akashwani Correspondent. This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of Akashwani. You can listen to it on our mobile app, 
News on AIR. This program is also available on our YouTube channel, News on AIR Official.